Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out Corsair's IQ H150i RGB Pro XT all in one 360mm liquid CPU cooler. Now, that name is a mouthful, and it's kind of a sign that Corsair has been around for a very long time. Being one of the pioneers in all in one cooling, the H150i nameplate has been the one they've used for their 360 millimeter class coolers. Now, I should mention that this review is actually part of a series of reviews I'm publishing on the channel. I've already published a review of the Liquid Freezer 2 360 from Arctic, where it did defeat some of my favorite air coolers. That wasn't too much of a surprise. Now I'm bringing in the main challengers, starting with Corsair, and I have a few others as well coming soon on the channel, so stay tuned for those. Now, the Corsair H150i is not the latest model from Corsair. This came out in March 2020. They actually have a Capellix model that came out in September 2020, but this is the one that Corsair specifically wanted me to test because I said I would be considering price in my rankings and I would also be testing a bunch of coolers, some of which didn't have RGB effects. So, you know, you pay more for RGB. That's just a given. And Corsair decided, well, we're going to kind of split the difference here and go with this model that has some RGB, but isn't the most expensive model we offer. So I did not stack the deck against Corsair in any way by choosing this. This is actually what they wanted me to test against the Arctic, as well as some of the other coolers I have coming soon on the channel. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the H150i and then get into those benchmarks. The H150i's radiator has a very classy chrome logo on it, which stands out without looking too gaudy. And the fans here are the ML120s. I've tested these before. They've been around for quite some time. No RGB effects here, and they spin up to 2400 RPM. And I'll be coming back to that RPM rating later in the video. And by the way, Corsair includes enough screws in the box to mount six fans in a push-pull arrangement, so you don't have to hunt around for additional screws. When it comes to setup, Corsair has done some of the work for you by pre-installing the Intel brackets and pre-applying the thermal paste. I actually took that off because I'm going to be using an AMD bracket, and I want to use Noctua NTH2 as my thermal paste to keep things apples to apples in the benchmarks versus the other high-end coolers in this test. Note that there are a lot of cables coming out of this cooler, including SATA for power, a three pin for the TAC, the fan harnesses, and then of course a USB cable, which is pretty unusual. But here it is installed, and after a few minutes of extra cable management, it looks pretty good. Using the Corsair IQ software, you can set a number of different RGB presets. Here's the standard spiral rainbow, which looks quite good. But I'll also show you a couple others I like, including Gradient, where you can choose two different colors and have them slowly switch back and forth, as well as a really cool effect called Arc, which is unique to Corsair, where you can set different colors for the inner and outer ring and have them spin around each other. Now a couple more installation notes before I get into the benchmarks. This actually uses AMD brackets that should be pre-installed on your motherboard, so make sure you have them before you try to install it. Here's that USB cable I have running up and then back down the back of the motherboard, and here are all the other cables I've routed to the back of the case. The hoses are very flexible and can be positioned in a number of different orientations, which allows you to mount your radiator just about anywhere, including up top or in the front of your case, although I always recommend to people that you actually mount it on the top of the chassis. And finally, here are some quick sound samples before we get into the benchmarks. Now jumping into the benchmarks, I'll start with idle at the desktop. I have a Ryzen 9 3900X that I fixed at 4.2 gigahertz and 1.3 volts. This is just running at minimum RPM. So the Corsair H150i can hit 300 RPM and I've set the pump to the minimum speed level. It's plenty quiet, definitely operating at the noise floor of my system, but it's pretty hot. And I think it's because the ML120 fans really are not particularly efficient at this low RPM. Moving on to my load test, I have CPU-Z running in a five minute loop, and here I have the fans at maximum RPM. And actually that means the Corsair pulls away from the pack just 63 degrees, which is quite a bit ahead of even the powerful Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360. But take a look at that noise level, 53 decibels. That's nothing to sneeze at. It's a whole lot louder than any of the other coolers 
But once I noise normalize the results by turning down the fans to a more reasonable level, 35 decibels, things aren't quite as pretty for Corsair. It's actually behind the Arctic model, but still ahead of the Noctua NHD 15, which is actually a pretty good place to be. Turning up the heat a little bit with Cinebench R20, this is actually about 25 watts hotter than CPU-Z. We see the Corsair cooler again getting ahead at maximum RPM, 66 degrees versus 69 for the Arctic and 70 for the Noctua NHD 15. But again, this is at 53 decibels, and as I showed you in the audio sample, that is quite loud. And once the results are noise normalized, Corsair falls behind the Arctic and actually is tied here with the Noctua NHD 15, and notably has the worst VRM temps. So if you are an extreme overclocker, this may not be the right choice for you. So in the end, it's a bit of a mixed bag for Corsair, and whether or not this is the right cooler for you will depend on your priorities. Now, if all you care about is extreme performance, this one wins. It beats the Liquid Freezer 2 360 from Arctic, because these ML120 fans spinning at their maximum RPM of 2400 put up some amazing airflow numbers and definitely cool hot running CPUs. But that's not enough for me. I don't do traditional cooler reviews because I look at noise normalized results. And when you do turn down the RPM on these fans to match other coolers, the H150i isn't quite as impressive. It does lose to the Liquid Freezer 2 360, but it just squeaks by Noctua's NHD 15, which actually on its own may be reason enough to go with this cooler. So you can say, hey, if I want noise normalized results, this will beat the best air cooler on the market. And if I want extreme results, I can turn up these fans to their maximum RPM and get tremendous thermal performance. Now, my personal opinion is that the ML120 fans are a little bit outdated. They were cutting edge when they were released, but as I've shown on my channel, there are a lot of different designs out there in terms of fans, and you know, you really have to optimize it for radiator use to make it work really well. And I don't think these blades are really designed for radiator use. Perhaps when this came out, there wasn't quite as much science and engineering that had gone in to blade design, but I can assure you that there are better radiator fans in the ML120s. The other thing that I'll say on the con side is that I do think it's a little bit expensive and you know you get a little bit of RGB but it's not quite as sophisticated as some other coolers out there and I'm going to be showing you some coolers in some of the videos coming up on the channel that I think have more interesting RGB effects. Now let's flip back to the positives. You got Corsair's name, you got their backing, you've got their customer service, you have a five-year warranty on this cooler and I know a lot of folks have commented on my previous video saying, I don't want to go with liquid. I don't trust it. You know, some other brands have two-year warranties. I'm not going that way. I'm going to stick with air. Well, Corsair trusts their design well enough to give you a five-year warranty and they will back that up. They have excellent customer service. The other thing I like about this is if you're a Corsair owner already, you get that IQ software integration. So you can control your lighting, you can control your fan, and you can even control your pump speed, which is pretty unusual. You usually can't do that with most other designs. So if you're already using IQ software on your system, that's a big bonus that you can actually integrate this and have all your Corsair gear lined up right there in one software suite. And it's typically easier to use and more reliable than a lot of the motherboard software suites that I've used when I don't have a proprietary suite like IQ. Now, of course, that comes with drawbacks. You can't control the fans and pump as easily with a motherboard unless you dissociate them from IQ and just plug them directly into your motherboard, then you'll lose the benefit of IQ. And you also have a lot of cables coming off the pump. This has more cables than any other cooler I've tested. You've got a SATA cable, the three pin for the pump. You also have a USB cable, and then you have all the cables for the fan. So it's a lot of cabling, a little bit of a cable mess that you have to deal with. So overall, in terms of the score, I'd give this cooler a four out of five. It does really well. It's not the top performer, and I do think it has some drawbacks in terms of its fan design, but on the flip side, you get Corsair support, that warranty, and you get IQ integration. So whether or not that's beneficial to you is really dependent on your situation. But if you have Corsair gear and you've enjoyed it and you're using IQ software already, that's a selling point for this cooler and the performance is there. Like I said, it will beat the best air coolers even on a noise normalized basis. So you get a step up from there. With that said, I do have a lot of competition and hey, you know, I've already shown that the Liquid Freezer 2360 can eke out a win when you look at noise normalized results, but I have a few more coolers waiting in the wings. They're actually right under this desk. I'm not going to show you what they are, but if you've been paying attention, you may know what they are already. 
they are going to be pretty potent challengers to the H150i. So you have to stay tuned to see how it works out in the end and which cooler wins the day. Until then, if you have any questions about this cooler or this video, definitely post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please do give me a like and subscribe. That really helps me out and gives me that extra incentive to produce more videos like this in the future. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.